So let's start off with the intro, which is this. Okay, so we're starting off 2nd finger, 12th fret, 3rd string, 3rd finger, 12th fret, 2nd string. We're going to play that twice. Then 2nd finger moves down 1 fret to the 11th fret, 1st finger goes down the 10th fret of the 2nd string. Play that twice. Slide that whole shape up so 1st finger is in the 13th fret, 2nd finger is in the 14th fret. Then you're going to move 2nd finger down to the 12th fret, 3rd finger will go back down to the 12th fret of the 2nd string and then back to the shape with the 1st and 2nd finger, 1st finger in the 10th fret, 2nd finger in the 11th fret, OK? OK, 2nd finger is staying down all the time. Now we've got this 2nd finger, 11th fret, 3rd string, sliding up to the 12th fret, 3rd finger plays 12th fret on the 2nd string, then we play the open, Thinner string. Very interesting little chord that. Very clever. It sounds fantastic. Then we've got a bit of a jump going. We're going to play the tenth fret on the thinner string twice with the little finger. Could use your first finger and do the jump later, but I'd recommend doing the, the position shift there. Then first finger is going to bar the thinnest three strings of the seventh fret. And you're going to play third fret, second fret, uh, sorry, third string, second string, thinner string, and then little finger goes down on the tenth fret of the second string. Okay, let me play that whole thing through nice and slow. I just noticed that I wasn't uh, sticking with the correct picking motions there because when I'm playing it really slowly I kind of don't need to so I'm going to try and do it again now slowly but managing to keep my picking directions correct and I'm going to try and talk that through in a second as well but uh, first of all I'll just play it so Okay, so what's interesting about this is it's starting on beat two. Okay, that might be a little bit confusing. I, I must say, I, when I first transcribed it, I was feeling it as beat one. There's definitely a beat two start. So we end up with this count, and I'll try and do it really slow. It's very difficult, I must admit, to count and play this one at the same time. It's probably one of the harder ones that I've done recently, but I'll give it a go just for you. So if we have this three, four, one, two and three and four and one and two and three four one and two and three and four and one and two and three four okay i'll try that one more time that was ripe just a little bit sketchy here we go three four one two and three and four and one and two and three four one and two and three and four and one and two and three four so that also by the count gives you the picking directions i'll just mention picking directions now this time so down up 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 down 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 slide down up 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 down down okay it's really important that you get that right because this the feeling of this hand feeling of continuous motion is really important for locking into the groove, particularly later on in the song, I think. So worth getting to grips with it now. I'll do it one more time with the count real nice and slow. So two, three, four, one, two and three and four and one and two and three, four, one and two and three and four and one and two and three, four. Okay, great riff. I mean, a really, really nice thing, particularly when you grasp that it's starting on beat two. If you're playing in a band, that could be throwing people off, but uh, now you know. Okay, let's look at the rest of the intro now. It's kind of the main riff of the tune, I guess, is the way I hear it, but uh, it's this part. Okay, really, really nice. 
nice playing here. Uh, third finger, third string, ninth fret, twice, and then second finger, eighth fret on the second string, back to the ninth fret, first finger, seventh fret on the thinner string, which is making the top part of an E minor triad, hopefully you recognize that. Then open string, twice open thinner string, then eighth fret with the second finger, little finger plays the tenth fret on the second string, okay? Particularly difficult riff, you know, fingers wise, but getting the rhythm right and getting the pick and right is a little bit tricky. I must say, this kind of riff, I haven't found a clear video of Johnny Marr playing, so he might be going <laughs> using all down picks. I'm not exactly sure, but the alternate picking idea of picking down on the beats and up on the on the ends is a, a very good starting point, at least. It'd be up to you if you wanted to change it. Um, so that's it. Just does that once there on the A minor, then it starts the same. <laughs> Then we've got this little slide, the, the shape is the same. So we're starting off the uh, second finger, 10th fret, third finger in the 11th fret, uh, strings two and three. And it's played twice, slides back two frets, and then played again. This is for the intro, the, the verses are slightly different there, but. Now the rest of the intro. Very much like the little thing that we've got right at the beginning. So 11 to 12 slide on the third, uh, second finger, third string. Then 12th fret on the second string, third finger. Then we play those notes again. Okay. Then uh, 10th and 11th fret. Slide it up to the 13th, 14th fret. It's a little kind of a mutey bit there. Um, just. Yeah. Is it? in the intro as well. I don't think I've uh, counted it out on the rhythmic uh, count through that I did, but it's there. 13, 14, mute, the 12s, and back to the 10 and 11. Okay. Uh, got again that little slide 11 to 12 12 on the second string open thinner string then little D triad 7 7 10 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 4 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 2 3 4 okay that section the, with the riff and that ending part 3 4 1 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 4 1 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 4 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 4 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 2 3 Four. There's that little gap there at the end. A little bit tricky, like I said, but it's totally worth checking out that. And it's it's really lovely part once you get it under your fingers. Took me a few goes. I won't lie. It's not a, you know it's not an easy tune, but it's a, you know all of the really good stuff's not easy generally speaking. Anyway, let me play that intro now, just all of the way through, and then we'll start talking about the verses. So it's this. <laughs> Let me give you a playthrough of the verse now and then I'll go through and describe uh, what's going on. Sounds like this. Really, really, really. 
really tasty part, this one. So the riff starts exactly the same. But then instead of doing the slide back and back up, instead of that, we play open E string, open B string. So open thinnest, open second string, which is a transition to allow us to get down to our little G chord here. So we have this. Now we've got second finger, third fret of the third string sliding up one fret. Then first finger, third fret, second string. Open G string, that's the third string twice. Back to the third fret. Third fret again, then open G. We'll talk about the rhythm of this in a second. Then open thinner string. Then the third fret again on the second string. Again, getting the picking right will really help with this. Down, slide, down, 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 up, up, down. Just does that once. The second time through starts almost the same. So we're starting with the uh, second finger, third fret of the third string, sliding at one fret up to the fourth, then first finger, third fret on the uh, second string, open G string, that's the third string, open fourth string. Then we're jumping up to the seventh fret. And we've, we're, now I'm using my second finger on the seventh fret of the second string and my first finger on the seventh fret of the third string. We play seventh fret on the third on the second string twice, then the seventh fret on the third string, then the open E string, the thinner string, then the seventh fret on the second string. Beautiful again, especially with this chorus. Lovely, lovely sound. Now that's the fingering I've got because I feel like it's easier to get to this shape, which is how the riff repeats around. I've seen a couple of videos of Johnny Planet, and it appears that he's using his third finger. It's not difficult to make the change from this. It's not like you don't have time to do it, but for me, I just found using first and second fingers was a little easier for the transition, but again, you know, it's totally your call. So the first, Riff starts the same, but we use the open strings to transition to this G chord. Let me play that through for you nice and slowly if I can manage to count it, because this is about the tenth time I've had to do it, and I keep getting the count wrong. It's a little bit awkward. Here we go. Three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, two, three, four, and one, and two, and three, four, one, and two, three, four, and one, and two. Again, the count will help you out with the picking there, but it's all about getting that rhythm right. Okay, really, really lovely part, and it repeats that around a lot. The verse starts with this when he's still doing that. But note, when we come back to the verse in the second part of the song, second verse, it starts with... Okay, that's where it starts back on the verse, okay, for the second verse. But the very first verse is starting with... I mean, you're going to have to be listening to a tune like this to be able to play it, because there's too much going on to just be relying on me telling you stuff. So, into the chorus now, and uh, the chorus part... Um, as I kind of mentioned in the intro, I only know about this part because I managed to find what's called a stem, so the isolated guitar part. Um, the actual chords are C to D. I think it, it's in videos of Johnny Meyer using this type of D chord, which is just a C shape moved up two frets. You could use regular D if you want. Then E minor to A7 to C, A7 to E minor. 
that that would be the chord sequence. That would be what's going on. However, the part that I'm going to show you, which is a lovely part, is this. Such a clever part, this. Um, starting off with a, just a C triad, really. So 10th fret on the, with the third finger on the fourth string, ninth fret, second finger, third string, first, uh, eighth fret, first finger, second string. Okay, it's just the middle part of this you know, C bar chord. And we play fourth string, third string, second string, third string. Then we play, which is a, it's essentially really a B minor, functioning as a D6, because we've got a D bass note. So uh, third finger in the ninth fret of the fourth string, first finger holding down second and third strings at the seventh fret. We're just going to play fourth string, third string, second string, third string again. Then we slide that shape up to the, so first finger is in the twelfth fret, and we're going to play fourteenth fret with the third finger, twelfth fret, twelfth fret, then open B. I think the open string is playing to transition to the next, which is this lovely A9 chord here. Second finger, 12th fret of the fifth string, first finger, 11th fret of the fourth string, third finger, 12th fret of the third string, little finger, 12th fret on the second string. Like a common kind of funk thing, but used beautifully here. This C add nine, which is the same as the first chord, but with little finger added on the tenth fret of the thinner string. Now we go to this other A seven. So this is the same as the other one. The little finger was on the twelfth fret of the second string. Now we're going to skip the second string and move little finger down onto the thinnest string. Okay, that pattern one more time. We've got this funky bit. I mean, how cool is that just to come into that, off all of those arpeggios in this song into a kind of a funk groove. Thick, low E string, played once. It's this E minor seven, so barring the se uh, seventh fret, first finger, uh, the thinnest five strings and adding second finger down on the eighth fret of the second string, third finger on the ninth fret of the fourth string. It's an E minor seven. So we've got down pick on the open string, then down, up, then lift off second and third finger, so it's just the bar. We're going to do three strums on that. Down, up, down, up, up. And there's a little mute. Notice here the release of the chord. So I'm playing the chord. I'm just releasing the, the, the grip on the chord so that the notes stop. It's not where they all ring out together. It's, it's a little bit more of a staccato feel. Now this is a C with an E bass. So first finger is covering the fifth fret, strings two, three, and four, and third finger goes in the seventh fret of the fifth string. Move that shape up two frets for D with an F sharp bass. Okay, now when it's it's doing the stop, okay, it's just stopping on that and after four. Okay, when you get a stop on, on that part at the end of the chorus. Let me play that right the way through twice. Oh, 
man. It's just killer. Uh, it's quite a few, later in the song, it just repeats around that section right until the end. So uh, get used to the idea of that cycling. It doesn't go back to that verse section again. And I think that's pretty much this tune. So I know you guys are going to ask about the sound as well, because the sound ain't normal, right? Um, I'm using a Strat. Pretty sure Johnny was playing it on a uh, Jaguar. I have a Jaguar, but it's a real pig and it never goes in tune. So I'm not going to be uh, getting that one out for today. But I found I could get the sound reasonably close. It's not exact, but by using the... Well, in fact, I thought I was on the middle pickup, but it appears that I'm on the uh, split humbucker and the middle pickup uh, together. Either I've knocked it accidentally or uh, um, it, it, that was what I chose. It was a little while ago, um, and I've since had lunch and forgotten. But anyway, it's, it sounds reasonably close. Um, the amp that I'm using is a Fender. Uh, I'm using the Kemper Profiler, but I'm using a Fender Profile from a, a Fender Deluxe amplifier, which I'm, it seems to be quite close. I did turn the gain down a little bit to clean it up because it was a little bit dirty. Um, there's also a very obvious chorus effect on it, okay? So I used a vintage chorus sound, um, and I've used, I had to put the, the rate and depth at about half, but it's very different depending on what chorus unit you're using as to the amount that you you use so uh, you definitely you just need to play and then turn your chorus on and experiment with the rate and experiment with the depth until it sounds like the record that's that's what i do that's how you can do it as well it's, there's not bigger secret than that um there's also a little bit of delay on it as well and i wasn't i was struggling a bit to get the delay sounding right i've gone for about a 400 millisecond delay a little bit like a slapback um but there's an extra repeat so three repeats um and I set the mix on that pretty low, I think like 20% or something, you know, not, not very high up in the mix. So that's, that's a good starting point, at, at least anyway. I don't think I've got, I've really nailed the sound down. But um, with all of these things, when you're trying to emulate the sound of something, it helps. Obviously, you can watch a couple of videos, find out what guitar they're playing or what type of amp. But really, it's just experimenting and trying, you know, I go through, try a whole bunch of different amp profiles and, until I find the one that seems to sound a bit like it, you know. Um, same with effects. So, you know, I can recognize that there's a chorus or a delay or a particular type of reverb or whatever. But uh you know, then it's just a little bit trial and error. And it's what I'd encourage you guys to do as well, not, not to say, oh, I want the settings, because the settings are really, particularly like chorus effects pedals, like every different chorus pedal, the rate at 50% is going to be completely different, even probably on two chorus pedals with the same manufacturer, you know. So um, you have to be uh, uh, aware of that and, and use your ears to try and guide you on, on getting your sounds right. Um, I can't think of what else you might ask about this tune. Oh, if you're going to play along with the original recording, because it's a fairly, some of the parts are fairly complex and the, the changes between the sections are a little tricky. Really good thing is to be practicing along the original recording at a less than full speed. So, you know, I already mentioned I used this software called Transcribe to change the pitch and I lowered it quite considerably to get it into normal tuning. But when I was learning the tune, after I'd kind of transcribed it, I knocked the speed down to, I think, 65 or 70%. And I played along with it at that speed to try and get the feel right and try and, you know, get used to moving between the different sections because otherwise, you know, you can always feel like you're kind of chasing it. And this kind of tune, you want to be sitting in the groove, not chasing the groove. So doing it a bit slower will help you develop that that feeling rather than just feeling like you're always kind of playing catch up with the with the original recording. So definitely, you know, any songs that are technically challenging at all for you, you definitely want to practice it slower first and really get settled on it and then gradually move it up to full speed. Um, hope you've enjoyed this lesson. I sure have enjoyed doing this one and I'll see you for plenty more very soon. Don't forget to check the community tab over on YouTube because I'm putting song requests up there and doing live transcribing. So subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell so you get notified when I'm going live doing transcribing performances. I'm going to be doing some songwriting shortly as well um, and production and arranging and that kind of stuff. Uh, at least that's planned. Uh, and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. I'll see you for plenty more very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.